In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate peak centroids for mass spectral data in Excel. The method for interpolating that I'm going to use here is called quadratic interpolation, where we'll estimate the top of each peak as a quadratic parabola, fit this using a least squares technique, and then use algebra to solve these equations for the peak top and peak height. There are other, more advanced methods for centroiding peaks, but for many tasks, the quadratic method I'll show here is good enough providing your peaks don't exhibit too much noise, of course. Here's the data we'll use for this demo. You can download this file for yourself from here and follow the task as we go along. This file contains a small region of a mass spectrum containing the signal from the ions of a peptide fragment of a protein. These columns over here contain information about the exact masses of the isotopolog ions for this peptide identified in this region of the mass spectrum. These two columns contain the mass spectral region itself. These next two contain the theoretical perfect isotopic distribution for the peptide fragment. And these last two columns contain the peak list of detected peaks in this region of the spectrum. In this task, we'll aim to produce a similar peak list, but I've included the answers here as they'll help you see how well you're doing. So as a first step, let's visualize the mass spectral data as a spectrum. In the mass spectrum, we can see the isotopic distribution of the peptide. Now, there are over 500 points in this mass spectral region, so we can make it easier for ourselves to find the regions that contain the peaks by highlighting all the points above this threshold level, 20 million. We do this by using the conditional formatting tool in Excel. To mark all the points above 20 million in the intensity column, first we mark the column and then we choose Conditional Formatting on the Home tab. We want to highlight cells with values greater than 20 million. And then we enter 20 million in this box here, taking care about the number of zeros. Now, every intensity greater than 20 million will be highlighted in red, and this makes them much easier for us to find. So let's scroll down to find the first peak. For each peak, we need the three points that cover the peak top. So that's the maximum value in the intensities list for that peak, plus one point on either side. Luckily, this peak has exactly three points above our threshold. If we plot these points and best fit a parabola to them, we get a figure like this. Because we've chosen to graph three points, the parabola fits exactly to them. If we look at the apex of the parabola, we can see that the peak top doesn't actually line up with any of the three original points, and is higher than even the highest one. So we're going to go through a process where we can calculate the coefficients of the parabola that fits across the top three points of every peak in this spectral region, and then go on to use them to calculate the mass of the peak position and the intensity. For each peak, we're going to need to find the top three points. So let's quickly scroll down the rest of the list and highlight these as we go. Sometimes the presence of decimals makes it harder to see which numbers are actually bigger than others. Okay, that seems to be all the peaks. Now we're going to be doing some of the calculations off to the right, so I'll just move the mass spectrum over so we can keep an eye on it. 
Rather than leaving the peak data all over the sheet, I'll build a neat peak table here by copying and pasting the values we just highlighted. So we're going to try to fit a parabola to each of the peaks in the peak list. This is the general form of a parabolic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, where y is where the parabola comes out, the x values will be the mass values, and the a, b, and c are the coefficients. To get the coefficients of each peak, we could fit a trend line to the graph like this, show the equation, and then manually copy and paste the coefficients into cells on the spreadsheet. But this is slow and cumbersome and difficult to scale. So there's a much better method you can use using equations in cells in the sheet itself. I'm going to be using the linest function to do the regression itself. And the linest function outputs an array. So I'm going to nest the linest function inside an index function to index out the individual coefficients that I need. If you're not familiar with either of these two functions, then click on the buttons to find out more. I've zoomed into the peak table so you can see what I'm typing as I put together the functions that I'll use to fit the curves to the peak tops. The first part of the function is linest, and it's the bit that does the actual fitting and solves for the coefficients. You have to point linest at the y data, in this case the intensities, comma, and then the x data, the mass values. And then after the x data, in this case we add the caret symbol, as this tells Excel to fit a polynomial type function, and then in curly brackets we tell Excel to fit coefficients for the powers of x, 1 and 2. And then we close the brackets. We don't have to tell Excel to fit the intercept term, that's the c term in the normal quadratic function, as it will add this automatically. If I put in the real values for the linest function for the first peak, this is what the equation would look like. If I type this linest function in by itself, what it would produce are three cells containing the a, b, and c coefficients of the second order polynomial. But the problem is, with Excel, if you use array functions, you have to enter them all and calculate them individually. You can't simply copy and paste them. So to make my life easier, I'm going to use the index function to index out of the array produced by the linest function. And that way I can copy and paste it. So this is the basic form of the index function. Firstly, you point it to an array, and then you identify the row number and column number, and it will extract the cell from that point in the array. So in this case, the linest function produces the array we want to index, and it only has one row in its output, so we set the row number to 1. And then finally, we'll choose the column numbers 1, 2, and 3 to identify the a, b, and c coefficients in the second-order polynomial function. So here's the complete function I'll enter for the a term for the first peak, and you can see we have the linest function nested inside the index function, and I'm outputting the first coefficient. Then I need to copy that function twice and just change which coefficient I extract from the linest function in order to get all the parameters of each curve. OK, so now I'll enter the equations into the sheet itself uh, to calculate the coefficients for the first peak.
Now having copied the equations down and corrected where the arrays point, I just need to increment the last number in the equations so that I get the second and third coefficients. So in this list of numbers we have the A term, the B term and the C term for the parabola that best fits the three points at the top of that first peak. And now our job is to find the apex of this parabola. So you'll notice at the top of the parabola the gradient is zero. The gradient of any function can be found by differentiation. So let's differentiate the equation for this function. So the gradient, that's the dy by dx, is 0 at the peak top. So let's replace that in the function. So now all we have to do is solve for x. So to do that we subtract b from both sides and then divide by 2a. So minus b divided by 2a equals x at the top of the parabola. So I enter minus 1 times the b term divided by 2 times the a term. So this gives us the mass of the first peak. And now we just have to work out its intensity by plugging that mass number back into the complete function for the parabola. So this function is simply ax squared plus bx plus c, where x is the mass at the peak top. So here is the peak mass and intensity for that first peak. And now, having entered the equations to calculate those for the first peak as functions, I can just copy and paste them for the other peaks. And now to run a quick check, let's test to see if the peak intensities we've calculated are close to the ones that came out of the mass spectrometry software. So to make the comparison easier, I'm just copying the peak intensities next to the originals that came from the mass spec software. And then if we calculate the ratios between the two values, this should be very close to 1 if we've done it correctly. So there you go, that's a simple run through about how to do quadratic peak top interpolation using Excel. Obviously this method works fine for solving peaks in small regions of the spectrum like this, uh, but it wouldn't be suitable if you tried to extend it out to a complete spectrum where you may have tens or hundreds of thousands of peaks. So in that case you'd need to use a programming language and learn to do peak detection in that. But having calculated the centroids by this method, in the next video I'll show you how to display centroids in graphs on Excel.